A few weeks ago, Speedy Bee sent me the Mario 5 frame to take a look at. In the box with that, they also sent me this, what they're calling their FDQ. Now, I forgot they actually sent me this, and as I was moving some stuff around, I found it actually among some products. So what I thought I'd do is give you a quick overview of what this actually is. This is quite an interesting little product, a little bit quirky, but it is something that you may find handy. Now, just to be crystal clear up front, Speedy Bee did send me this for free as part of that Mario 5 frame review. However, they have not paid me to make this video. They didn't even ask me to make this video. I've just decided to do it because I found it in the box with the other stuff. And as a result of that, I thought I'd do something on it because it is a little bit interesting. Anyway, let's get on with it and let's take a look at what this is all about. Okay, so let's just take a look at what this is. Now, the box says it is the Speedy Bee. FDQ. It has a power input of 3 to 6S on a LiPo and it supports fast charging protocol PD 3.0 and it has charging power at 3S up to 30 watt, 4S up to 40 watt and 6S up to 60 watt. Now basically this is a power delivery charger that supports a LiPo battery allowing you to safely discharge your LiPo battery whilst charging another device. Now, I don't know a lot about this. I didn't even know this existed when I first opened the box. I had a bit of a play with it and it isn't the easiest thing to use, I'll be honest with you, and I'll show you that in a minute. Now, on this, you'll find our XT60 input at the bottom that supports 3 to 6S. There is a balance port on the side. You can see there that it's labeled negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So again, up to 6S battery. And then the only other thing you'll find is a USB-C output up here for using it as a charger. Then on the front, we've got a power button as well as, well, it's sort of a, a round recycle stroke refresh logo there. And then we've got a little LED display there. Now, the idea of this is to have a simple way to discharge LiPo batteries, but also not put that power to waste because most of the battery chargers turn that energy that's in your battery into heat, whereas this one is going to allow you to charge other devices. Speedy Bee have done this before. For instance, the Speedy Bee adapter does allow you to use it as a USB port, but the difference with this one is you can sort of set the lower limit for the voltage to protect it from being over discharged. Okay, so to demo this in use, I'm going to use one of my old 4S LiPo packs. This is a bench pack that I always keep around for things like this, but you're obviously going to want to use whatever battery you want to discharge. Now, we've got our two buttons. The left-hand side just controls the display as well as turns it on and off. So you can see it's powered on and showed us the current voltage, which is 16 volts. If I press the button, it'll scroll through to the voltage on the output. As there's nothing plugged in, that's currently zero. And if I press it again, it'll show you the current on the output. And again, as there's nothing plugged in, it shows zero. If I now tap the right button, you can see it will then scroll through the cell voltages. So we've got four on this one. So 3.98, 3.98, 4.02, and 3.93. And then it cycles back to the beginning. Now you can set a voltage alarm on this. So the lowest voltage you want your cells to get to before setting that alarm off, allowing you to discharge your battery, but then make sure that you don't over discharge it. To do that, you press and hold this right button and then you'll see it'll come up and flash. You can see it's currently set to 3.8 volt and I can adjust this with the buttons on either side and then press and hold the right button again to save it. So what we've now said is when the voltage of the cell gets to 3.8 volt, set off the alarm. If we just do it and set it to something a bit higher, if we go to 3.95 say for this there we go i've set it and then that means it will go off in a minute when we start to discharge now just to demo this in actual use we're going to plug in a usb c cable actually no we're not because that one doesn't fit this one's got a bit of a squared end that there is a rounded edge so that one doesn't want to fit hold on a minute let me go and get another one Okay, so I've got another USB-C cable. This is one now that actually fits. And on the other side, it is plugged in to my DJI Action 2. So if I just set it to the voltage screen, if I plug that in, you should then see that kick in. Now it's kicked in at 5.1 volts. If 
we just scroll through, 1.96 amps. And then if we look at the cell voltages, we've got it dropping as it's in use. And what will happen now is when the cell voltages or whichever one, the lowest one, gets down to that preset voltage, then the alarm will go off on the screen. It'll actually give you an error code and it is error six for the voltage alarm setting. And then it will actually turn the device off to prevent you from over discharging the LiPo. Now we'll just wait a second because one of these, there we go. We've just, just as I pressed it, it got down to the voltage. You can now see we've got error six and it gives off quite a piercing sound. And what will happen in a second is it'll actually turn itself off. There we go. The module is turned off. My camera is no longer charging and the battery is down to the voltage that we wanted it set to. Now, one last thing I just want to mention on this is with regards to that discharging. I have been doing some testing and it doesn't appear that it discharges via the balance port. And what I mean by that is this. It will discharge the battery via the main XT60, but it doesn't balance the cells on discharge. I just had it on quite a high load and had set it at 3.80 volt. You can now see that the voltages have actually come back up to 3.88, 3.87. What you're gonna need to take into account on this is any sag on the battery is going to recover after the discharge. Because you can't actually set the discharge rate on this, it is going to output as much power as it is capable of as your device will take. So for instance, if you were going to put this on a 6S battery on a laptop that will charge at 60 watts, it's going to draw 60 watts and as a result of that you're going to actually have more sag on the cells and then you're going to have more recovery on the cells after the discharge is finished. If you look here I actually had this set on this discharge to 3.80 volts as you can see there. The alarm had literally just gone off to tell me it had finished and if we scroll through the cells you can see we've got down to 3.86, 3.86, 3.91, 3.84. I need to check this battery on another actual battery tester. I've got it here. We'll just check it in a minute just to see if those numbers mirror because there's quite a variance there and it is meant to be very accurate. So we will just check that. Um, but it isn't gonna balance on discharge, so you do need to take that into account. The thing to understand with it, it's, it's a bit of a brute force discharger rather than a balanced discharger. So if we just check these, so we've got 3.86, 3.87, 3.91, 3.83. .3. Let's just check that on one of my other ones. Hmm. 3.87, 3.88, 3.83, 3.81. I'm not convinced how accurate that cell readout is on that. This is pretty good. I've used this a lot. Um, mm, not so sure on that. If we go back in. I certainly wouldn't be using it for absolute accuracy. Mm. Yeah. A little bit mm, on that one, especially on port three. The only other thing I just want to mention before I finish up is you actually need to be really careful on this with this balance port. It is very easy to put your balance cable in the wrong way and you will get lots of sparks and flames if you do. I can tell you that because I accidentally did it in my testing as well. Didn't damage the device, but I melted a balance cable on a LiPo. So you do need to take great care when pushing it in. It is keyed, but that doesn't mean you can't force it in if you're not watching or being careful. And whilst that's always the case on any LiPo charger discharger, it is something I did on this that I haven't done on another one for quite some time. 
Okay, now just to share with you some opinions on this. Overall, it's an interesting product in the sense of it's a good way of being able to charge devices and discharge a LiPo battery at the same time. However, it is far from perfect. For instance, that USB-C port on the top is countersunk, which means not all cables will fit. Also, the way it works is a little bit quirky. Yes, the two buttons aren't particularly difficult, but one side gives you the display changes, the other side sets the alarm. But the worst part about it is the fact that you have to know what the error codes mean. I only showed you error code 6 in this video. That means it's reached the target voltage. However, there are a number of other error codes that mean different things, and you then going to have to refer to the instructions to understand what that actually means. It would have been far better to have had a bigger display on there that actually told you what the problem was, or even just an LED that told you what the problem was, rather than this just random error code output. It's not a bad device, it's just certainly not the easiest device that I've ever used. Now, price-wise, this device is actually very cheap. It's under $20. For that, you're getting a device that allows you to discharge up to 6S batteries and output up to 60 watts via the power delivery protocol. If we scroll down to the bottom, they actually list all of the protocols this device supports. So right at the bottom of the page, you can see it's Power Delivery 3.0, QC4+, and all of the other options. And as I've said, you've got that 60 watt max on this 6S pack, or you've got 30 watt max on the 3S pack. It weighs 56 grams, and as you can see here, on the SpeedyB website, they do have all of the error codes listed. As I've mentioned already, this is a little bit quirky. I would have rather, if I'm honest, the device cost a little bit more and actually had a proper display rather than you trying to understand what this means. So if you need to discharge some batteries and you want to be able to use that as a charger, it's going to be worth a look less than $20. It's not bad for the money, really. However, as I've said already, it's really not perfect. If you're interested in getting one, there will be a link to it in the description. Now, that's it from me on this one. I hope you found this video useful. If you have, please do let me know what you think in the comment section. If you have any questions, please do put them down below as well. If you're interested in supporting the channel, there will also be links to my Patreon as well as buy me a coffee. I want to say a massive thank you to all of my Patreons. We would not be able to keep doing this without your support. Anyway, that's it from me. Stay safe. I'll speak to you soon.